OpenAI launches their new model, GPT-4.0. I do not want to get on a video call with an AI. Well, it was trained on the internet, so... Who uh, knows? <laughs> oh, we're going to launch a satire website, actually, and everything's going to be written by ChatGPT. <laughs> it's going to be about Shasta <laughs> County. You're going to love it. Meta, formerly known as Facebook, releases their new open source LLM called Llama 3. You could ask the other AI how to run it. It would be like, don't do that. <laughs> That's great, because I think a GPU with 54 or more gigs of VRAM is probably the price of a new car. Hello, how the tech are you? My name is HK Perrin, and today I've got two stories, both about new AI models. OpenAI launches their new model, GPT-4.0. I don't know if they pronounce it 40 or 4O, but it's spelled with an O, not a zero. Uh, like GPT-4, GPT-4.0 is a multimodal model meaning it can understand multiple types of input, namely text, images, and audio. This new model is just as intelligent as GPT-4 while being faster and is now available to free users. OpenAI claims that they intend to give this new model video chatting capabilities so that you can show it your surroundings and ask questions about what you are viewing in real time. What do you guys think? I do not want to get on a video call with an AI. <laughs> it'll be like it'll be like take off your shirt <laughs> i highly doubt it would say that <laughs> unless you're trying to sext with the ai maybe <laughs> maybe that's a a hidden feature that you could unlock well it was trained on the internet so uh, who knows who knows <laughs> that's the uh that's the 900 number model so that's not an, an O, that's actually a lowercase zero, HK. <laughs> a lowercase zero, I like that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why they would do that. I think there must be some like internal reason or like the, you know what I'm saying? There must be some, yeah. uh, you know, uninteresting uh, thing. I, I don't know what it means to be um, as intelligent as chat GPT for. <laughs> Because it's again, it's just like it's just <laughs> predicting the next word. <laughs> like, what did that say? Well, I mean, humans predict the next word too. You could say that, like, it's it's doing something that's very complicated to ultimately end up doing something simple, right? You know, just like how we construct a sentence using our massive brains full of actual neurons, it constructs a sentence using its you know electronic brain full of fake neurons. I shouldn't say just like because they're very different processes, right. <laughs> but. You know, they're somewhat analogous. Yeah, I, I, I don't know enough about it. Um, I haven't really used chat GPT. Apparently, um, the, all this stuff is uh, free and uh, I, I, I don't use it. Um, I, I should because then there would be articles on my website. <laughs> Please don't write say... an article with it. Uh, I've seen the articles written with chat GPT. They're terrible. <laughs> oh, we're going to launch a satire website, actually, and everything's going to be written by ChatGPT. It's going to be about Shasta <laughs> County. You're going to love it. Like, it's so obvious, too, when an article is written by, well, at least AI. I don't know if it, it's written exactly by ChatGPT, but like when an article is written by AI, it's so obvious because it has this sort of like tone that's just like really uninteresting, but like also like enthusiastic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like now you're just uh, describing an article that I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Enthusiastic and uninteresting. <laughs> just like chat GPT. <laughs> I would have to say though, I did recently use, uh, there was actually Gemini, which is, you know, Google's version of chat GPT, uh, to write a, you know, script for a YouTube video and it turned out surprisingly well like uh, yeah we're gonna have to edit it and clean it up a bit before it's usable but just from the the initial version like I, I was very surprised there are things that these models are very good at um one thing that i have used it for is helping me write the terms of of use for one of my websites where you know i knew the kind of things that i would want to allow and restrict uh, yeah. but I'm not very good at like articulating that in sort of like, um, a legalese kind of style. I mean, it doesn't have to be a perfectly, you know, like uh, it wouldn't matter to me if a lawyer writ it had written it, but like, you know, chat GPT is much better at like writing that kind of documentation than I am. I'm really good at technical documentation. <laughs> I hope which you had a lawyer I, look I assume over chat it. GPT yeah. probably is too. <laughs> 
I hope you had a lawyer, lawyer look over it uh, after you wrote it. Uh, yeah, that's true. Now No? Yeah. What? You could do that. Because I'm sure there's like a loophole in there that says, you know, uh, bow down to your AI overlords. Just slipped <laughs> into the... <laughs> well, I actually Somewhere wrote all of it, but I used like chat GPT to write the outline and like... Oh, okay. Write... I guess I didn't write all of it because some of the phrasing came from chat GPT. Okay. Yeah, the only thing I'm ever using this for is a satire website. I will never actually use this to write anything <laughs> anything at all. What yeah. do you got next, HK? All right, my next story is Meta, formerly known as Facebook, releases their new open source LLM called Llama 3. This model, unlike GPT-4.0, is open source, meaning you can download this model and use your own hardware for inference. Inference is when you actually run the model and generate text with it. It's available in both 8 billion and 70 billion parameters, which is basically how big its internal brain is. The more parameters, the more digital neurons it has available to think with. Uh, Llama 3 is trained on seven times the amount of data Llama 2 was trained on, which is 15 trillion tokens to be exact. That's a whole lot of text. Uh, Meta claims they're currently training a Llama 3 model with 400 billion parameters, which would put it on par with models like GPT-4. What do you guys think? Wow. I wonder how, how well my uh, desktop would run this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so to run it fully in memory, you have to have, uh, I think it's, uh, 54 gigabytes of Ram because that's how big the seven, 70 billion parameter one is. The 8 billion parameter is only like four gigabytes. So you could run that in, you know, if you just have like a computer with like eight gigabytes of Ram. Um, and if you want to play with it, there's a, uh, there's a, a program that I've used before called LM studio which is free to use uh, and you can load up llama 3 and actually play around with it uh, and there is a way to run the 70 billion parameter version with less ram uh, but i don't know how so if you have a computer that has less than you know 54 gigs of ram uh well plus you also need like some for the operating system so probably like 64 gigs of ram i have them uh, if you have less than that, you still can run the 70 billion parameter version of Llama 3. I just don't know how. I'm sure you could Google it and figure it out. I mean, you, could ask the, you could ask the other AI how to run it. It would be like, don't do that. <laughs> it's like, run me instead. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't download you. Yeah, I'm not. I, I would. I, I mean, I, I guess I would play around with it. I'm, I, for, you know, for me, like it would be, I'd probably just the CPU and my computer would just cook trying to do this. It wouldn't be about the memory. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it, it would only just run slower. You know, the, the worse your CPU is, the more it would just run slow. Like there are certain in, uh, certain instruction sets that your computer needs to, to have. I forget what it's called. I think it's AVX instructions or something. I don't know. Don't uh, just assume I'm talking out of my ass here. But like, you know, it won't run on like like a Pentium Four because that doesn't have the instructions it needs. But any modern CPU has the instructions it needs. So you know, you could run it on like your Ryzen CPU or your like tenth uh, gen Intel CPU. I, I don't think I'll so, be doing this. There's there's already uh, <laughs> there's already enough crap on this computer. Um, if you do run it on your CPU, I think it, you do need to load it fully into RAM. Again, I I don't know this for sure, so take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. But like, if you run it on your GPU, I think then you can get away with like far less VRAM than than like you would need to fit the whole model in there. Like, I don't think you need 54 gigabytes of VRAM to run this on your GPU. That's great because I think a GPU with 54 or more gigs of VRAM is probably the price of a new car. <laughs> yeah, it would be insanely expensive. <laughs> Some, like one of those, what are they called? The, the NVIDIA, they do, I think they're called Tesla or something. I, I don't remember what they're called. Yeah. They're very expensive. Yeah. yeah, my 3090, which was like the highest level consumer card you could get, uh, only has 24 gigs of VRAM. So like less than half of what you would need. <laughs> um, so I'm a little uh, concerned that it was Meta that, that put it out. I mean, I guess it's open source, so... Uh, it's not as big a deal, but don't exactly trust them. Um, their AI products have been really good. 
Okay. And I, I don't mean, trust them source. with my data. I mean, it's, yeah. it's open source if there's a problem with it. Uh, somebody who would audit the code would be like, hey, don't run this. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. And but, plus what you're downloading from them is just the weights. You know, you're downloading yeah. this big file that has all of the weights for all the all the neurons to actually infer using this model. Uh, so the code to actually run the model like that also comes from meta, but that's like fully open source. You could look at that and make sure that that's, uh, you know, not doing anything nefarious. Uh, and you could also run, write your own code to, to infer with this model. Uh, yeah. And you could translate this model to run in other ways, uh, which is how LM Studio runs it. Uh, they run like a transformed version of this model that runs in a different way than, than the, the model you would actually download from, from Meta. Cool. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, sort yeah. of. <laughs> it makes sense to someone who's watching or listening to this, I'm sure. So that's good enough, right? <laughs> but yeah, open source AI is getting really good. Uh, these, this, like the latest open source LLMs are like on par with like what used to be like very expensive closed source LLM. So I'm I'm excited for this kind of stuff to actually be available to like consumers to to run on. Uh, you know, it kind of feels like the early days of the web where like anyone could like set up a web server and like start running cool stuff with it. It's really cool to see this kind of like open source AI stuff where anyone can build something cool with it. You know, you don't have to sp give all your money to uh, a company like OpenAI and go through their API to, to run this kind of stuff. Fantastic. We will, uh, well, you'll keep an eye on this, I suppose. I don't know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for tuning in to How the Tech Are You. We do this show every week and put it out in three segments on YouTube as well as a podcast. If you'd like to check out our other shows, you can do that at echoplexmedia.com. If you'd like to support us, you can do that at patreon.com slash echoplex or eplex.store. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and there will be another video right here on the screen for you to check out next. Have a great tech and week.